Create a website from scratch using HTML and Tailwind CSS. All of the source code will be available through the GitHub link in the description. First, open Visual Studio Code. From here, you want to go File and open the folder where you want to create this project. Once you select the folder where you'll be creating this project, we want to over here on the left and navigate to where it says Extensions. Here, we want to search for Tailwind CSS IntelliSense by Tailwind Labs. We want to make sure to go ahead and install and enable this extension. And once you do that, you need to create a tailwind.config file to make sure that this works. And since we're using HTML today, this will be a JavaScript file. So I'll go ahead and copy this, navigate back to my file explorer, create a new file and paste in tailwind.config and make this a .js file just like so. And once we install and enable this and create this JavaScript file here, we will be able to successfully use this extension. Next, I want to create another file, and this is going to be an index.html file. And then I also want to create a new folder titled images. And within this images folder, I'm going to go ahead and paste in all of the images that I'll use in today's video again. These will all be available through the GitHub link below. Now you guys can see that I successfully pasted in all six of the images that we'll be using today. Next, I want to make sure that I navigate to my index.html file and I want to start by creating a basic boilerplate by entering an exclamation mark and hitting enter. And today we're going to be creating our website as a travel agency for people looking for beach trips and beach resorts. So because of that, I'll go ahead and make the title of my page Tropical Resort. Next, inside of my head element, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in a Google font that I'll be using today called Crete. If you guys need help and wanna see a tutorial on how to use Google Fonts, I'll leave a link up top and down below for you guys. And at this point, I'm gonna to navigate to the bottom right and start my live server with the extension called Five Server. And so you guys can see everything that I'm doing as we work through the video today. I'm gonna to leave my code editor on the left and my live server on the right as we work through this. Next, we wanna navigate back to our browser and create a new tab and look for Tailwind CSS. And it's going to be this first link here. And once we get here, we wanna to navigate to docs. And there's gonna be multiple different ways you can use Tailwind CSS. If you're using React or Next.js or another framework, you can install it directly using the Tailwind CLI. But today we're gonna to use the Play CDN to keep it nice and basic. And so here it'll walk you through the steps to using it. But all you need to know is that you need to copy this script element here, linking to Tailwind, copy this. And then from here, we can go back to our HTML document and simply paste it within our head element like so. And if you guys wanna see another tutorial where I show you how to use the CLI here in something like React or Next.js, I will be making another video detailing that. But next, what we wanna do is go ahead and include our HTML favicon or our browser icon right here. So to do that, we need to create a link element, change our rel to icon right here. And I wanna go ahead and specify the path of this by going to my images folder and my logo.png. Include a type attribute and make this image slash PNG. And now you guys can see that our logo is appearing in our browser tab. Now we can finally start using our Tailwind classes. So the first thing we wanna do is set up some base classes in our body element. So we'll go ahead and create our class attribute. And what we wanna do first is specify a text size. So what I wanna do is navigate back to Tailwind CSS and I can go ahead and search for something like font size and it'll break down the whole process for me. So basically there's a bunch of different text sizes that you guys can use here. But what we want to do is make sure that our text size is responsive. So what we want to do is use our text sizing responsively. So to do that, we need to use media queries. And luckily that is all built into Tailwind already. 
So in the search, you want to search for media and click where it says media and feature queries here. And what it'll do is it'll break down how you can use media queries. So what we'll do is navigate back over to our index.html. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and shrink this down for a minute here. And I'm going to navigate back to where it says font size like so. And we're going to start off by using this class right here. And we can just go ahead and copy it directly from the documentation and paste it right in to our body element here. And so what this is going to do is it's going to make all of our text within our body element small. So to make this responsive, we want to target our first breakpoint at small, and then we're going to change this to text dash base. And now you guys can see why the Tailwind CSS extension is so useful because it's helping us auto complete here and I can just go ahead and select it from there. Next, I want to set up my medium breakpoint and make the text large. And lastly, for really wide viewport widths, I want to target my large breakpoint and make our text size extra large like so. Use a margin X, which is going to be left and right margin of automatic. And if we navigate back to our live server here, nothing is displaying, but now we have successfully set up responsive text sizing. So the next thing we want to do is start off by creating our navigation. So we'll create a nav element here and then we'll go ahead and create our class attribute. And we want to start off by adding some padding. And again, for any classes that I'm using in today's video, you can simply search them up over here in Tailwind CSS and copy and paste them. But to save some time, I'm going to be typing a lot of these in manually because I already know what classes I want to use. So I want to use a padding left and right of four and a padding top and bottom of two. And I want to make sure that my text is a black color here. And there's a bunch of different colors that you can use in Tailwind CSS. If you go over here and simply search for colors, you can see text color here and it will provide a bunch of different colors and it will show you exactly what that color is going to look like on the right side over here. We want the background of our navigation to be white so we can use BG followed by white. And then we want our font to be bold so we'll use font dash bold. Next, we want to create a div element and then create our class attribute again. And we're going to be using a container here today. A container is just going to offer us a responsive resize and layout for our website here. So if you search for container, you guys can see all the different breakpoints and exactly where that breakpoint happens. So to start off, we'll create our container class and then we want to make this a flex box. If you guys want to learn more about flex and exactly how it works, I'll leave a link up top and down below to a video where I walk you through it. And then we want to use our justify between and make sure all of our items are centered with items center. And lastly, we want to include a margin left and right of automatic again. Next, we'll create an anchor element and this just needs the link to our index.html. And then once again, we'll create our class attribute and we want to make this a flex box again and make sure all of our items are centered. And inside of this anchor, we want to include an image element and we simply want to use our logo again, just like we did in our head element. Then we'll go ahead and make sure to include our alternative text here. And then we want to add our classes. And all we need to do here is use a with class and we're going to make this W-9. Then underneath that, we'll create an H3 element, include our text tropical resort. And then we need to include our class attribute again. And what we're going to do is change our text size to 2XL. Next, we want to use our Google font. So to do that, we want to include our font class followed by a dash. And since this is a custom font, we want to use our square brackets followed by quotation marks and we want to specify Crete. And then since there's a space here, we want to use an underscore instead of just a normal space and then specify the rest of our font. And then outside of the quotation marks here, we also want to include a background font of serif. And then you guys are going to see that it's not successfully using the font here because we need to get rid of this space. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And now you guys can see our custom font displaying. 
Now underneath our anchor element, we want to create another div and then add our class attribute. And we want to make this a flex box and then we want to use justify around. So we'll go ahead and specify that. Here I want to create my anchor element and this one is going to link to the index.html page again and we're going to say home. And here we'll create our class attribute again. And this time we want to create a hover effect. So we'll use hover followed by colon and then we want to specify our text color and we're going to be using sky 500 so now if i hover on this element it will change to this color and i want to go ahead and copy this anchor element and paste it down below and this i'll go ahead and get rid of index.html we're not actually going to create this page today so we'll just include a hashtag symbol and then we'll change this text to about. And then you can see those are jumbled together and that's because I forgot to include my gap property here. And now to space these apart, I wanna go back to my div here and add a gap left and right using X of five. Underneath our nav element, I wanna go ahead and create another div and I wanna go ahead and include some classes. Specify a height of two, a background color of sky, 500 and I also want to include a drop shadow of medium here and so now you guys can see that our navigation is completely finished and it's displaying successfully over here now we're going to move on to creating our next section and we're going to start off with a div element and then create our class attribute and here I want to specify a min height of fit and a bold font. Next, I'll go ahead and create another div. And here we want to create a container, make this a flex box, but we also want to change the direction of flex column. And then for small devices, we wanna change this to flex row. And then we wanna use the item center, followed by a padding of four, a gap of four, and a left and right margin of automatic. Next, create another div, and here I want to specify a flex basis of one half. Inside of this, I'll create an H1 element, and at this point I wanna use our custom font again, so I'll just copy and paste it down below. Then I wanna make this text size really large, so I'll use text 3XL, and then use our medium media query, and make our text 5XL at this break point. And then I'll include a margin bottom of three. And now I can paste in my text. Underneath this H1, I wanna create a button with a left and right padding of four and a top and bottom padding of two. And here I'm gonna use the background sky 500 color, include a white text and make our button rounded with the rounded class. Now we want to include a hover effect and I'm going to use the exact same background sky but this time it's going to be 600 and then i'll include my text and i want to have two buttons here so i'll go ahead and copy this one and down below it i will paste it in but instead of using blue again what we're going to do is actually use red so i'll replace sky here both times with red and now you guys can see i have a blue and a red button and then I'm gonna go ahead and change out this text. Underneath this div, I wanna go ahead and create one more, and I'm once again going to use my flex basis of one half and a width of two fourths. Next, I'll create an image, and I'll go ahead and link to my image right here, include my alt text, and then I wanna include my width of full class, rounded medium, and shadow medium. Now you guys can see we have our navigation and our call to action section here. And you guys can see that this is completely responsive if we go ahead and inspect this and go ahead and shrink it down into a mobile view with like so. Underneath this div, I'm gonna go ahead and create a section element, include a gray background, a padding top and bottom of 12, and left and right of two. Inside of this section, I'll create a div, with a container, left and right margin of auto, and text center. Now I can create an H2 element, include my text size of 
3XL, make my font bold here and include a margin bottom of six and paste my text. Next, I'll create a paragraph element, use the text gray 600 class and a margin bottom of eight and then go ahead and paste in my text. Now I wanna create a div element and we're going to use grid here. Again, we need to make this responsive. So we're gonna start off with grid columns one and this is going to be for our smallest viewport width. And so at our small breakpoint, what we wanna do is make this two columns and then for our largest viewport width, we'll go ahead and make this three columns. And then we want to include a gap of eight and use text white here. And now we'll start off with a div to create our first card element. So for this first card, we'll use a background sky of 600. Make sure this card is rounded, add a drop shadow of large, and we want to include the overflow hidden. Now we want to create a basic hover animation. So we'll use hover followed by colon, and then we want to scale this. And for this case, we'll use 105. And then we want to use transform and transition. Inside of that, we'll create an image. We want to link to our first image and I'll use this one right here. Make sure to include our alt text. And then we want to use a full width of this image. So we'll say W dash full. Then we want to specify our height of 48 and use object cover. After that, we'll create another div, include a padding of four. Then we'll create an H3 element, change our text to extra large, use a semi bold font and then a margin bottom of two and then go ahead and paste in our text and now you guys can see our card starting to come together along with its animation next I want to create a paragraph element change our text to small and then simply paste in our text the last thing we need to do for this card is create a button make our border two use our rounded class, include a padding of 1.5 and a margin top of three. And then say right here, book now. Now you guys can see that we created this card element. What we can do now is just go ahead and copy this and paste it down below. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is change my blue background color to red, and then I can go ahead and change out the text and the image. So now you guys can see I have a new card for Cozumel with a different color and text. And we're only gonna have three cards in today's video, but you can have as many as you want. So we'll go ahead and paste this one more time and we'll change our background color to purple now. And then I'll go ahead and change out my image and my text. Now you guys can see that we have all three of our card elements, but when it's displaying in two columns, you guys can see we have this random white space that we don't want. So for our third element here, what we want to do is add some custom classes here to fix that. So we'll go ahead and specify our small breakpoint. And at this breakpoint, we want this element to take up two columns. So when we go ahead and change that, you guys can see it's now occupying the full two columns. And then since we included this small breakpoint, we need to also include a large breakpoint and change this to call span one. So it'll only take up one. So now if you go ahead and look at this, if we make it a full viewport width, you guys can see that our first two elements are displaying in a one column layout as well as our third. But if we go ahead and inspect this and shrink it down, you guys will see that when that happens, our third element takes up both columns so we don't have that unnecessary white space. Congratulations, you guys just learned how to create a complete website using HTML and Tailwind CSS. If you guys have any questions today, please go down below in the comments and let me know. Thanks so much for watching. And again, all of the source code will be linked down below through the GitHub link.